They do offer um, care for, you know, to pay privately if you didn't, if you weren't eligible for whatever program it is they're offering. And I just want to stress that that's really important. If you do ha have to have somebody come in privately, you want to use someone that you know has had a background check, that they're safe to be in your home, that they're certified, and that they're going to be covered if, God forbid, they get some type of an injury in your home. Okay, so that's just just an important no, thing to remember. No, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. And they can be really helpful in terms of also being kind of your care manager. Remember, one of the people we've brought in here before were geriatric care managers, people in charge of kind of figuring out how to put together all the pieces so that you've got a care plan that works for you. They can really act in that, in that capacity, right? Because that, that's the kind of skill set they have. Finally, uh, if, you, if you qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, then you also um, can get um, through a couple of different programs, the, either the PCA program or the program called Caregiver Homes, you can actually have your child be paid by MassHealth to be, your, to be there at home helping you out. Now, once again, I'm not going to go through the details of either of those programs. I just want to mention that they're both available. And as, as we discussed, you could always private pay, in that case, some of your, some, for some of your care and still get MassHealth to cover the rest of it, right? So, but the main thing is to, and, and by the way, in terms of planning, I want you to be aware of all this because all of these alternatives that I just went through do not require transferring all your assets to a third party and waiting five years. Everything that I just talked about in terms of transfer to your spouse or transfer to the D4C can all be done the day before you apply for the program. So you don't have to be worried about that. Next slide. Um, then there are two programs that Medicare will pay for. One of them and, and I wanted to, Deb to, to elaborate on this a little bit because actually, very frankly, she's the, one of the people that actually told me this existed. And I just learned this. You know, every day you try to learn a new thing. I always thought that in order to get Medicare to pay for your care, you had to have been in the hospital or, or in rehab and be getting discharged with a care plan. But no, there is another way. Deb? So Medicare will pay for 60-day care as long as you have some type of a skilled need and that's the rub. <laughs> so we, what happens frequently is patients will come into our office and one of the physicians will come up to me and say, you know, I'm really concerned, you know, with how this patient's doing and I think they would really benefit from having some nursing care. And so I then look at the chart and I meet with the family and I meet with the patient and I find out exactly what's going on for them. So it may be that we've changed some medicines and we're not sure how they're going to respond to that. And we want the nurse to go out and assess, are those medications working? Maybe we're concerned about some memory problems that we have noticed when the patients come in. And we want to have, you know, a social worker and a, and a nurse to go out or a physical therapist somebody to do a home safety evaluation, make sure there's no scatter rugs on the floor, make sure they've got those grab bars in the tub if they don't, you know, all of those things that you may or may not be aware of that are really important for keeping you safe in your home. So as long as there is some type of a skilled service that I can justify, Medicare would pay for it, then I can put a referral into an area visiting nurse um, in the area. And it's, we, we have affiliations with um, Metro West Home Care and also with VNA Care Network, but if you've got a VNA that you've used before and you're happy with using that, then we would have you go there. It's always your preference of what you want to use. Uh, Metro West Home Care is one of the, of the affiliations. Oh, visit VNA means visiting nurse association. Oh, okay. Sorry. Right. Yep. And I just had two, two questions. First of all, in order for that 60-day care plan to be 
payable by Medicare. Yes. Does, does your doctor have to sign off on that plan? Or does you need to have a doctor's order, yeah. which uh, when we send the VNA out, they call and tell us what they think you're going to need. And you also need to be showing that you're making progression. So let's say we send out a physical therapist, and the physical therapist says, I'm going to go out three times a week for two weeks and then one time a week for a month. At the end of that period, if the patient still needs services, they can actually readjust that. But if the patient is decided, I don't want to do this, <laughs> I don't want this person coming out, which sometimes happens, or if they've stabilized, it means they're not making any progression, they're not getting any better, then we cannot continue to keep those services in there because Medicare actually considers that to be fraud. We're billing for services that they're not able to give. So, you know, as long as you can show that you're uh, making progress, whether it's education, whether it's helping someone get stronger, as long as you can show that you're actually providing a service, you can have them in your home. And, I, and that answered my second question, because the other question was, at the end of the 60 days, like, is that it? And the answer is, as long as you are progressing, as long as you are improving and you're not just stable or refusing services, then those periods can be continued. So once again, you can be frail in your home feeling really crummy, but you don't have to figure out some reason to fall down and go to the hospital in order to get these services. You can actually get them at home, which is really, really important. Um, an additional possibility in order to get a ton of these services is hospice. <gasps> Isn't hospice what you do just before you die, like the day before you die. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that Melissa Plitt told me, and this is one of the things that got me interested in doing these, this program and having you hear this, is that the average amount of time that people live after they're on hospice is only about like seven days. The reason for that is not because they dropped dead because they were in hospice or because that's all it covers, but rather because in people's minds, Oh, you don't talk to hospice until you are about to die. Hospice is all about living well. It is about living well. God decides the number of days. You decide to live how, to, how you want to live them. And that's why I wanted you to hear about hospice. Melissa. Thank you all. Thanks for all being here today. And I really do hope that but I'm going to... Melissa, you want to be away from this? Thank I you. do. I Thank really you. hope that I'm going to change many of your opinion today of the word hospice. And I really do hope that you're going to leave here with some new information and some new ideas about what hospice is and what it isn't and some myths about hospice. Um, hospice is a free program. It is a Medicare entitled program and it offers free services, a free, so, uh, let me put it this way. If somebody came up to you and said, would you like a free program that offers free benefits? free services, a free social worker, a free nurse, a free home health aid, a free hospital bed, free supplies, free medications. Did I mention it's free? If you need free any of these things, would you like those services if you needed them? Would you like free pain management, a free doctor to be by your bedside if you needed it? Would you, do you think you might want one of those programs? Or if someone came up to you and said, I think you need hospice because it looks like you're gonna die. Which one would you choose? <laughs> Just wondering. When I go out and meet with families, and I'm a social worker, and my biggest role when I meet with families is, what can I help you with? And a lot of times, people are afraid of this process. And as Arthur mentioned, what makes me the saddest is that people don't call us until they're very close to the end. And the rule of hospice is the only thing that we need to make you qualify for hospice is that a doctor, and no crystal ball is needed here, is that a doctor has to say, most likely, if this disease follows this normal course, most likely, without aggressive measure, if it follows its normal course, the patient might pass within six months. And that's it. That's all they need. So does the patient get kicked off in six months? No. We've had patients on service for two years. Why is that? Because the doctor keeps saying, most likely in six months, the patient might pass away. But nobody's a psychic, and the patient still needs our services. We continue to recertify. We meet and talk about the patients every week. And as long as they still qualify, they continue to get 
a free social worker, a free nurse, a free bedside visit by the doctor whenever it's needed, and everything is individualized. So I'm here to talk about breaking some myths. And some people think you need to have a DNR. Does everyone know what a DNR is? No. no. It means do not resuscitate. And what that means is many people do not want to be resuscitated at the very end of life. I, it's an hour-long conversation just about this in itself. It causes a lot of problems to a lot of frail elders at the end of life when you do CPR and intubate and a lot of those things. But it is a very personal, cultural, and religious decision that we at Evercare Hospice believe that we don't have the right to make that decision. It is your choice, your decision, you make it. So that is our belief at Evercare Hospice. And one of the other myths um, is that you have to change your doctor. You do not have to change your doctor. We have a doctor dedicated to us 24 hours a day that works with your doctor. So collectively, two heads are better than one, and we work together to make the best suggestions for your care. The, qual the focus is on the quality of life. We don't focus on how long you're going to live, fewer, longer, but I will tell you this. You take two patients side by side, the same disease, the same process, and statistically over and over and over and time and time again, the patient that chooses hospice lives longer than the patient that doesn't choose hospice. And that is a myth that is surprising to people over and over again. In fact, the average length of days is 29 days. For the patients with congestive heart failure, 81 days longer. Go figure. You think it's the other way around, but the reality. The average is 29 days longer. Yes. So the patient, the, the what's that? The good quality care. We don't. Nothing is focused on length of stay. Other, it, the focus is on the quality of care, the comfort, and what ends up happening is all the extra services that we put in place, the care, the love, the nurturance, the guidance, the love that's put in place. It just nurtures and brightens people and makes them want to live longer. It, it's just this magic thing that happens that we see over and over and over again that when people aren't in pain and they're not spending their days in misery, they just tend to live longer. And as I said, with congestive heart failure, it's 81 days longer, with, statistically, with patients who choose hospice than those that don't. I can mention our graduation. We call it graduates. I can. Um, we call it graduates, which is really cute because I've had patients look at me and go, I graduated, yay! One in four of all patients of ours that come on to hospice end up doing so well that they no longer qualify. And that's a very happy day for us. Um, and it's a beautiful thing to see. And that's our own agency's personal statistic. I don't know what it is nationwide with all agencies, but 25% is our, is our statistic. So when you're sitting here thinking hospice means they die tomorrow, I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. So there's a myth for you. I just busted it. So other myths about hospice, when we talk about you know, it being expensive and whatnot, things about that. All of the equipment, as I mentioned, if you're at home, and this is, 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 is hospice a place, hospice is wherever you are. We go to you. There are hospice houses. You could have hospice in a nursing home. You could have hospice in an assisted living. You could have hospice in a rest home or in a private home. So we go wherever you are. If you're in a private home and you need a hospital bed, if you need a bedside commode, um, a bedside table, a special wheelchair, a special mattress. We get it delivered right to your home. Your medications are delivered to your home. Everything that is for treating the illness in which we're caring for is covered free of charge. 